So let's assume that uh, you have uh, developed uh, an application. So let's say you have developed an application and this application is, is very good, okay? And uh, your friend, let's say you have many friends and all these friends want to use this particular application. So what you do is this application you put in your uh, computer. So let's say you have a laptop and in this particular laptop, uh, you are going to put this particular application, right? And uh, your friends will use their computing devices and use the internet and use this particular application. So basically you made your computing device as a server. So all these friends will get that particular application. And uh, then for, for a period of time, uh, the popularity of your application is, will become high and not only two, three of your friends, but there are many other people want to use your applications, okay? So the number of people who are using your application will be more, right? Now, in this particular case, what will happen is there will be the stress in your servers, in your, in your uh, laptop, because your laptop is of limited resources. And uh, the same thing is, and, and, and another thing is you are earning money. So you will be happy for that. And as you are earning the money with this particular application and this application will become popular. Now, when it is increasing, you are earning money, right? You are getting so much money, right? And you'll be happy on that. But when we, these number of people, who are using your application will be increasing more. So this particular laptop or your computing device could not able to serve it. And if they are not able to serve it, all those people will be, will not use it. Means they will be not interested because it is not available. So they will go to other application. They will not use your application. So when you see that, so what you do is you will upgrade your computing resource and you bought some server. Okay. So you get some more servers there. And this application you will put in this particular server, right? So in that way, the cost will be there, but you are getting the money to fulfill the cost of it. So you will be again happy that many people are again using it. So these people who are gone will now be in your, in your server and they will use it. Now, uh, once, once the number of people has been increased, what you have done is you have increased your computing resources, right? Increase, increase your uh, server capacity. Now, when you increase your server capacity, there is a need of load balancer. So what this load balancer unit will do is, whatever request will is coming, in your server based on the load of the server, server number one, server number two, and server number three, this request will be allocated to any of these servers based on what they, they have right now, how many requests they are serving right now, what is the capacity of these uh, servers right now, right? So based on that, the request will be fulfilled and uh, will be 
uh, and and what happened in this particular scenario is you again on big money right so and and when there is an absence of the load balancer so there will be some issues again because these servers are there but if you are not maintaining the load among the servers again the same scenario will happen that most of the load will go to one server and if it is going to one server then then again uh, the other other uh, users who are using your application could not able to get your application because that server is overloaded right so we need the load balancer in that scenario so these are the need of the load balancer i hope you understood why we required load balancing right now let's see the definition of the a load balancing or load balancing balancer the cloud the cloud load balancing is defined as the method of splitting workload right we are going to split we divide the workload and computing properties in the cloud computing so we define the de uh, divide the workload and the computing property of the cloud computing so that is the uh, main um, objective of any cloud load balancer it enable enterprises to manage workload demand and application demands by distributing resource among numerous computer network and servers right so what it will enable it will enable the workload uh, sorry it will manage the workload and what demand is 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 coming for that particular uh, resources as well as application and it will divide all those resources among different computers network and servers and fulfill those requirement based on the availability of the of the server cloud load balancing include holding the circulation of work traffic and demand that exists over the internet so definitely we are getting the let's say we have uh, different servers so we are getting the request from any of the computing device by any of the user right any of the user let's say he is using the uh, the palm top laptop or the desktop even right so this is coming through the internet only to the cloud and in the cloud we have different servers to serve it right so the work of the load balancer is to manage all those request load balancing is beneficial with almost any type of service right so load balancing is is not only balancing the load of the hardware it is balancing any type of uh, services which is provided by the cloud let's say we have http services ht uh, uh, smtp services dns ftp pop and imap services it also raises reliability through redundancy reliability through redundancy it means that the one request could might be served with two or more servers the balancing services is provided by a uh, dedicated hardware devices or program so the balancer could be the hardware dedicated hardware or it could be the dedicated software cloud based server frames uh, farms uh, can attain more precise scalability and availability using server load balancing now the cloud balancer servers forms means the cloud service providers can attain more precise and more precise scalable and availability scalability and availability using a uh, server load balancing technique it means that they will provide more scalability they will provide more availability due to the load balancing algorithm or load balancing techniques these are the objective of the load balancer 
the first objective is to maintain system formless means how my system is form and giving the request uh, giving the reply to all the request to improve system performance with that we can improve the system performance it means that if any server is overloaded we can give the request to those underloaded uh, servers so that the response will be quick in that way the performance will be increased to protect against system failure if system has been failed so we can uh, reroute the request to other server which are available right so these are the common objective of the load balancer load balancing solutions can be categorized into two types right so load balancing could be of two types the first type of load balancer is software based load balancer another type of load balancer is hardware based load balancer so we have two type of load balancer technique the software load balancer the software based load balancer run on standard hardware that is desktop or pcs and standard operating systems it means that if you want to make want to create the the software based uh, load balancer so there will be the software which is running on the desktop or the pc with any standard operating system which is supported by that particular software now let's go to the hardware based load balancer so the hardware based load balancer are dedicated boxes which include application specific integrated circuits adapted for a particular use that application specific integrated circuits allow high speed uh, promotion of network traffic and a frequently used for transport level load balance because hardware based load balancing is faster in comparison to software based load balancing see so this this hard uh, load balancer are actually the hardware so we have done some coding into that particular hardware and that hardware is dedicated for the load balancer so this is the hardware you can see for the load balancer and this load balancer has a specific integrated circuitry for the special uh, special uh, application so that is nothing but the hardware load balancer this hardware load balancer is in the form of hardware box or hardware device uh, which will do the load balancing and here that particular software could run into the laptop so here the load balancer are software load balancer which will run in a standard computing device okay but because we have the dedicated box or dedicated hardware for the load balancing this hardware load balancer is more popular and it is giving more faster uh, result than the software load balancer okay so we generally use hardware load balancer now let's see the scenario here now i told you one one uh, example like we have a user or we have different users these different user will give their request through the internet the request will go to the virtual server and this virtual server uh, is with the load balancer connected with the load balancer and the request of these users will go to these servers means allocate the request to any of these server based on the load balancing algorithm and whatever result it will give it will reply back to the internet to the user okay so the load balancer plays the important role here if we are not using the load balancer then what will happen is whatever the request is it will go based on their ip addresses so the request is with the ip let's say user 1 is requesting the ip let's say 10. Dot, i told you the i told you one uh, scenario where let's say 10.2.0.1 is 
the IP address it is requesting. And let's say this is 10.2.0.1. So it will go to that particular server all the time. Let's say this is uh, requesting 10.2.0.2. Let's say this is requesting 10.2.0.3. And we have the server accordingly. We have the server accordingly. So let's assume that if the server fails, then what will happen? The request requested by this particular user who is requesting the server 10.2.0.3, which is not available, could not be served. But when we have the load balancer, then how the request will go? Let's say we have the load balancer available. So it will, they will not do the request with the IP address. Instead, they will do the request with the IP address of the virtual server. So there is a virtual server. This virtual server has the IP address, let's say 2.1.1. 2, 2. Uh, let's say this is the virtual, uh, uh, virtual server's IP address. So all these requests will go to that particular virtual server only. This virtual server will be connected with the, with the load balancer. And this load balancer will decide that which particular node has to be given the request. And based on the availability of these resources, the load balancer will give the request to it. So let's say later on, if this node is not available, then this load balancer will give the request to any of these server which are available and the user third user who is not getting the getting the response previously now they are getting the response right even though this node failed or this node is not available okay so that is the advantage of the load balancer okay